Hello, I'm Travis from Vast AI, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use our system. This is a quick start guide so that you can very quickly get into our system and start renting a GPU. So let's get started. The first thing to do will be to log in. Uh, so to make an account, uh, you can hit the so with that, you can go uh, to the main search interface here, login modal, and then hit create, add your email address, and then we'll send you an email. Click on the link in that email to verify your account. Then you're going to want to jump over into the billing section and add a credit card or pay with crypto. When you hit add credits, you can see the different options that are available. Once you add a credit card, it will be added as an option. We also have Coinbase and Crypto.com payment options available. Select the amount that you'd want to add in credit and then hit that add credit button. And it will process the credit card or crypto payment. You might also want to update the automatic top up settings for your account so that when your account gets to a low credit amount that it'll automatically top up. That's so that your instances will keep running. It's always great to open our docs up here. Look here, uh, we have a quick start guide that kind of covers a lot of what I'm talking about today. Uh, we have an FAQ that goes into a lot of details um, about, with common questions and then we have our guides that are organized by use cases. And uh, so for a lot of the common use cases, if you're doing image generation, video generation, uh, text embedding, 3D rendering, development, audio to text, text to audio, there's a lot of different frameworks that we have guides for that walk you through what templates that we have and uh, how they all work. So I encourage you to definitely take a look at our documentation. And then the first thing you're going to want to do is pick a template. We have a lot of recommended templates that we have tested and uh, prepared for you. So depending upon what you're renting the GPU for, you can look and, and pick a template that is relevant to that use case for general Computing, we have NVIDIA CUDA and PyTorch. Those will, uh, those templates have Jupyter Notebooks built in, uh, SSH access, and a couple of other kind of conveniences that come pre-installed. If you're looking for text generation, we have Ubabuga. Uh, we also support VLLM. A lot of different options for text generation frameworks. For uh, a desktop experience, we recommend the Linux Dex desktop container, which is here. We also support Pinocchio, which is a very interesting system. For image generation, we have Comfy UI templates. We now also support several video generation templates like OpenSora and Comfy UI with L the LTX video module. We also support um, right out of the box Whisper, which is a transcription service, along with quite a few other templates. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, is pick your template. I'll pick Comfy UI. And uh, then you're going to want to size how much disk you need. Uh, I'll go ahead and pick 128 gigabytes. You can see the price for the storage by hovering over the rent button. You can see the price for storage, <clears throat> the GPU price, and then the total cost. And note that the storage price will continue to accrue whether you have the instance running or stopped. So no instance is ever free. Uh, if the instance is in your account, it's accumulating charges, even if it's stopped. I'll go ahead and show you that. So here we have an H200 NVL. This is a very interesting. Uh, type of GPU, so I'm going to rent one of those. Also, just change my template really quick to PyTorch, which is really standard, and uh, rent a 5090 as well. 
and I'll also pick uh, this desktop container and show you how that works. So once I, I've, now that I've rented an instance, you can go to the instances page here to see the instances and how they load up. Uh, right now, these three are loading. Uh, you can see a lot of detail about these instances. To get the IP and port options, you can click on this button. You can see where the instance is located. You can, if there are plans available to save additional um, using our reserved instance discount system, uh, you can see that that will be available as an option. Clicking the open button will open our portal that uh, loads some of the different services that are running on the instance. And uh, so our applications on this instance is ComfyUI is running, Jupyter is running, uh, Jupyter Terminal, um, and this service. So you can see all the services that are running. You can also look at the logs. And I'm seeing here that it's still loading and downloading a model for Comfy UI. So um, we'll let that continue to load. And then this 5090 and 5080, these are both up and running. Go ahead and open this. So each instance that you rent will have a different portal. And the services that run on that are depending upon the template that you selected. So this instance that I just picked is running the Linux desktop environment. So when I launch this, as you can see, I'll have a virtual desktop experience kind of loaded into uh, the instance. And here you can see I am uh, I'm actually in a virtual environment and uh, running on this other computer. So this is our Linux desktop uh, template, which is running on this instance. Um, and then I can go back over and let's see if this is all set up. Looks like it is. So I'm going to go back uh, to my Comfy UI instance, which you can see here. So this one's running Comfy. This is running PyTorch. This is the Linux desktop. So I'll go back to my Comfy and open portals. And then I can launch Comfy UI. And this service has now completely spun up. It's loaded some of the standard models that we come with. it comes with. Um, and there's no workflows available right now that come stock, but this is the basic comfy UI interface. And for PyTorch, um, again, this will open the instance portal. Um, for our basic PyTorch template, you know, we're running Jupyter. Uh, then you can always connect via SSH, which I can show you. But Jupyter um, allows you to run notebooks. Also from Jupyter, you can open a terminal, um, which let me zoom in. You can see. is uh, good for running commands. So that's how you can quickly open up a terminal. You can also upload files. So it makes kind of an easy WYSIWYG file browser um, by just hitting the upload button. So, uh, and then also just to point out Jupyter, 
is loaded uh, kind of stock on most of our recommended templates. And there's a button here on the interface card. You can launch it. If you want to connect directly via SSH, these are the SSH options. Um, and then you can manage your keys on each instance uh, with the key button. You can add keys, remove keys. And then um, there's a bunch of different other, other options. You can uh, tag uh, the machine. You can recreate the machine if, if you, the instance if you need to change the template. Uh, you can upload and download data from uh, Cloud Sync options. Uh, like Dropbox, Google Drive, S3, and Backblaze. You can uh, reboot the instance if you need to, um, and then you can destroy the instance once you're done. Anytime you can check the billing and see how much you're being charged per hour and per day. And you just want to make sure you destroy all your instances. And if you stop an instance, um, you can see that you will still be charged for storage, uh, but you will no longer start accruing the GPU charges. And when you stop an instance, you still can copy data to and from it. Um, however, you uh, cannot use the GPU. So again, there's no free instance. If an instance is in your account, you are being charged a little bit for it, at the very least for the storage. And if I jump over the billing, I can see I'm being charged about 43 cents a day or two cents an hour for this instance. So I'll go ahead and destroy that. And uh, that's the basics. You select a template and then pick a GPU. Uh, we have tons of filters as well that I didn't uh, fully get into. Um, you can filter by bandwidth amounts, uh, CPU, uh, internet speeds, um, the total GPU count, the number of flops, the price, and then on the top here is like the number of GPUs, uh, the type of rental if you want it interruptible, on demand, or reserved. Um, here you can filter by machines that are available for longer. If you want to run a machine for three months, you can move this max duration slider over. And you can see now that all these instances are available for a longer term. Um, if I sort by flops, I'll see the biggest machines that we have. And somebody just added this 16x 5090, which is a very interesting build. Uh, and here you can see some of our H100s, H200s, uh, 4090s, H100 NVLs, and all the different types of uh, machines that we have available on the platform. So uh, I hope that has given you a good overview of, of what we're up to here at VAST. And have fun. <laughs>